What's going on everyone? My name is Tenebris Infinite and welcome back to Generation Zero. Let me know, how many times has this happened to you, my dudes? Alright, there we go. Big loot. Big loot, big loot. Aw, oh, man. Then man, do I have the video for you today. So today we're going to be talking about how to diversify the bullets and ammunition in Generation Zero to make looting more rewarding to the player. Uh, this way we could avoid situations where when all you find is bullets, all you get is disappointment. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about a number of different varieties of ammunition kind of across the board. Uh, I've done a lot of research into different ammo types and different types of small arms and munitions uh, and how they handle and uh, a lot of research into this video. Uh, but we're going to be basically just talking about really unique types of ammo, how they could benefit us as the players and uh, where they would kind of serve a purpose here in Generation Zero. So as always with my wish list type videos and with my feature suggestion type vi videos, if you're liking the ideas that I'm putting down, hit that thumbs up button. And if you aren't liking the ideas that I'm putting down, then hit that thumbs down button. And for either or, let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below so we can have a dialogue. The more we talk about these things, the better idea we could get for how the community feels about things and whether or not these feature suggestions are actually good for us as a whole. So, first things first, I'm going to talk about the round that I think is probably the most interesting out of this entire list in terms of uh, the kind of visual dynamic that it could potentially have here in Generation Zero, as well as the purpose and the way that this bullet would actually slightly adjust the current meta that we have in the game so far. So the first thing you might be wondering is, what the heck is a slap round and why would that shape the meta or change the meta currently here in Generation Zero. It's just a bullet, it can't do that much. So what a slap round is, is it's called a Sabo Light Armor Penetrator Round. Basically, uh, Sabo is a polymer holding case so that that way the projectile, the actual bullet itself, can be a smaller diameter than the bore of the gun, which leads to just crazy amounts of power and crazy amounts of armor penetration. That coinciding alongside the fact that it is an incredibly sharp chunk of tungsten that is the actual bullet itself, uh, the slap rounds wind up having some of the highest amount of armor penetration. Now let's talk about how this one single bullet could change the meta of Generation Zero. Basically, the idea is is that the current meta of generation zero heavily requires you to have an experimental pvg which for some players can be really difficult to acquire either through rng randomness or just not having the time to grind enough levels or they're just maybe getting into the game who knows but the idea of this is that it would bring the effect of the experimental PVG to lesser PVGs of lower qualities. Now, the, the way this kind of changes the meta is that basically it, it will bring the PVG kind of to a little bit more of an even ground between its experimental and its lesser versions. Uh, which means that players won't feel as shoehorned into using or acquiring that experimental PVG. But the experimental will still be the superior option in comparison. Still kind of keeping it at the top of the food chain, but kind of closing that gap between it and the typical 50 cal. Now you might be wondering what would happen if you then put a slap round into the experimental PVG. And I think nothing. I think that the idea of the slap round is that it would just kind of equalize the base PVG and the experimental version itself. And the only benefit that the experimental would have then over the base PVG would simply be uh, basically that every round it would fire from it would be a slap round. Or at least have the same effect due to that railgun modification. So for the next bullet we're going to talk about today, we're going to be talking about another bullet that is kind of a quote-unquote improvement type bullet to what we currently have. Uh, so we're going to be talking about boat tail bullets. 
Now, what a bow tail bullet is, is exactly what you think. So the tail end of the bullet is kind of like the same shape as a boat. It's kind of smoothed so that that way the bullet itself is a little bit more aerodynamic. Now, boat tail bullets aren't very much different from full metal jackets outside of this single difference. So the idea of boat tail bullets is just that they hold their accuracy a little bit better over long range distances. Now, we could see boat tail bullets kind of just come into the game similar to the way AP rounds work for most different types of ammunition in the game. So you'll have your typical 5.56 FMJ rounds and then your 5.56 AP rounds. But then if we were to include the boat tail rounds, we could have the 5.56 BTB rounds. And basically it would give the opportunity for the assault rifles in the game to be used better as uh, DMRs, designated marksman rifles. Uh, it would improve uh, hunting rifles at further distances and Maybe it would be nice to throw on the 50 BMG too, though that doesn't really need too much help with its bullet accuracy over long distances. Now for the next two types of ammo that we're going to talk about, they're kind of trash, they're kind of terrible, but I think that it would be really good for us to include a type of ammunition into the game that is absolute dirt that is that is like the the worst of the worst kind of like the bird shot for other types of guns and specifically we're going to be talking about ammunitions for the pistols for our sidearms so we're going to be talking about first the lrn rounds otherwise known as the lead round nose bullets uh and then we're going to talk about the wad cutters so um so for the LRN rounds, these are basically going to be a worse option for the 44 Magnus and the 9mm itself. Uh, what this will do is it will create a, a certain level of appreciation for the hollow point rounds and then also for the typical 9mm full metal jacket. Uh, is because the idea is, is if we want to kind of like even out the disparity by utilizing certain different types of ammo, then we also kind of need to create a little bit stronger of a base end, a low end for these types of ammo. Uh, it, it would also lead to really fun challenges that we could bring ourselves as the players. So say for instance, my uh, challenge that I did a while back where I took down an apocalypse tank with, a, with the dilapidated molar PP. It would be so much fun if instead I could then go in and do that challenge again, but with the wad cutters, with something that is literally designed to just punch holes in paper. Or if I could go off, take a dilapidated Magnus and have a proper challenge out of it, because even the dilapidated Magnus itself is a pretty powerful sidearm to utilize in the game. So then maybe I could take the LRN rounds, put them into the Magnus, and then do a similar challenge where I'm fighting maybe a rival or a, or a strong machine of some sort. So LRN rounds, just to kind of break down why they're so bad, uh, is a bullet that's made entirely out of lead. There's no copper or hard metal jacket of any type. Uh, like you'd expect from a typical FMJ. Uh, the nose itself is rounded, which creates less armor penetration itself because uh, it, it's so heavily rounded. Uh, as well, uh, there are no kind of like hollow points in it, pockets or sharp edges or anything like that uh, for an LRN round. Uh, and then the other thing that kind of really goes against LRN rounds is that there is uh, a lot of debate about whether or not LRN rounds uh, that are fired out of handguns actually have enough uh, ballistic velocity to actually uh, have proper expansion uh, on impact. And so I, th I think that that would pay basically be a good explanation as to why the bullets are weak here in Generation Zero. Now next up for the wad cutters, the wad cutters are kind of a really funny little bullet, at least to me. I understand their purpose, but it still is a little bit ridiculous to me. So basically the wad cutters are for target practice. They aren't for actually shooting uh, like any sort of uh, real combat situation. And basically they're only for shooting paper targets, glorified long distance hole punchers. 
So the way the uh, wad cutter works is it's basically the bullet is just this flat kind of cylinder that sits inside the shell uh, and then gets launched out and has probably a really low terminal velocity in comparison to anything with some sort of an edge to it. Uh, and, and again, because of its shape and its flat edge, it just punches really nice holes in paper. So the idea of it is that this would be around for the 32 ACP that would give an opportunity for newer players to learn uh, hey, hollow points really aren't that bad as long as you know how to use them and as long as you learn how to use them. Uh, and then also, on top of that, it would be really fun for mad lads like me to go out and <laughs> just have some sort of ridiculous, borderline impossible challenge of taking down some strong machine with a glorified hole puncher. Now, <laughs> let's stop talking about bullets that are utter trash and not give too many ideas to the devs for torturing us. Um, <laughs> and let's start talking about incendiary rounds. Now, you might be thinking, Tenebris, we already have incendiary rounds with the experimental AG4. And I would actually highly beg to differ. Uh, my theory as to what causes the flame effect on the AG4 is that actually some sort of ignitable fluid gets covered in the bullet, and then when the bullet lands, uh, the combination of the uh, fireball that gets created when the bullet itself gets launched, and then the probable sparks that will happen from the FMJ uh, colliding with any sort of surface, uh, then leads to the fluid that gets covered on the bullet getting ignited. Uh, and that leads to this long-lasting flame, because as you guys can see in this video here, incendiary rounds actually don't uh, immediately cause any sort of fire. They kind of more so cause like a small-scale uh, explosion, and then that explosion can itself cause fires, but the bullet itself is never actually like on fire in terms of its ignition stance. It's more so just that once it hits something, it's going to make like a kind of secondary ball of fire upon impact. Which I actually believe this is all kind of intentional by the developers as well. Uh, as if you look on the experimental AG4, you can see this tube that kind of runs along the side of the gun and feeds into the barrel. And it's my belief that that tube is what transports that ignitable fluid into the barrel of the gun as the bullet is being fired through it. Now the idea of this is that it would then bring the burn tick damage from the experimental AG4 to multiple different types of guns. And you could even include this burning effect on other experimental guns, depending on if that experimental gun had an incendiary variant of its ammunition. Uh, I think that it would be good to see incendiary rounds for the 50 BMG, for the 5.56 and for the 7.62 and pretty much just that bar uh, further example that we're going to talk about in this video. Now the thing that will really differentiate the AG4, the experimental AG4, and these incendiary bullets will be that burn time. How long those bullets are actually burning on the target for. And uh, so with the incendiary rounds, just like with that slow motion video that you saw there, uh, basically that burning effect would only last for like maybe a second or something like that. It, it would only do like one or two points of extra additional damage. But the benefit of these rounds is that they could be really really good for taking down armor and then again having that chip damage just kind of build up along the way as you're emptying your mags into the enemy. Now for the next round, I wasn't able to find any good pictures of just your typical depleted uranium round, but I was able to find examples of incendiary variants. So essentially, these depleted uranium rounds I think might be the most controversial inclusion on this list, maybe between the uranium and the uh, real crap bullets. But basically, the idea of this is that depleted uranium is actually an incredibly dense material. It's super super dense. And so the way this could benefit us as the player is even though the machines would not be affected by 
the radiation or anything like that, uh, they would be very much affected by the heavy penetration. And basically the idea of this depleted uranium round is that it would just eat through any sort of armor in a way that the AP rounds don't. Uh, but it wouldn't have the same effect as the Sable rounds because those rounds are having like a penetrating piercing effect, whereas these would just lead to like total destruction of any sort of armor on your opponent. Now, the main way we would acquire these is solely from Apocalypse Runners, because they are the only enemy in the game to use uh, this kind of radiation effect, this kind of biohazard effect on you. And the conclusion that we can make is that is basically radiation damage of some sort. And so we can use that to then assume that their bullets are potentially depleted uranium bullets, this would kind of also give a little bit of an explanation to their weapon that would give it a bit of that grounded reality that kind of ties a lot of Generation Zero together in a sensible fashion. Now these depleted uranium bullets would only come in the variants that you get from the runners themselves, so they would only be for the 762 and for the 556. Uh, and the kind of idea of this is that the 50 cal is already getting those slap rounds, so it's not like the depleted uranium would really benefit them. And then, as well, you don't get 50 BMG ammo from the runners anyway. All you ever get is 762 and 556, so uh, it just kind of, in my mind, makes a lot of sense. Though you definitely could use depleted uranium rounds for the 50 cal as well, uh, I just think that it wouldn't be necessary uh, if the slap rounds were introduced. For the next round, this one's really simple, so we'll just cover it really quickly here, because basically it goes along the same lines as the incendiary rounds that we were talking about before. Uh, basically, this would just be the Dragon's Breath round for the shotgun, for the 12-gauge, and basically it would be an incendiary shotgun shell that would be able to apply that burn tick damage, but instead from a shotgun in comparison to the other weapons that would just have the typical incendiary round. And for the last round of the day, this one is one that's actually been brought up in the community a number of times, which are heat rounds for the, uh, the GRG, the Granatyavar. Basically, the idea is, is that the high explosive dual purpose uh, round, the HEDP round that we get, is not really designed for any sort of armor penetration, uh, and it's really kind of not exactly designed for the sort of combat that we're dealing with here, where we're dealing with uh, armored opponents and stuff. R really something that would do the job much better would be a high explosive anti-tank round that has a serious amount of penetration. Now the benefit of this is that then finally the Granat Yavar would be uh, a really viable weapon to utilize against large enemies like tanks and harvesters, provided you have heat rounds on hand. Uh, otherwise, you might want to stick it out with another weapon, but this would give the opportunity for the Granat Yavar to kind of uh, see a breath of new life in it, because I'm not sure if you guys feel me on this, but the Granat Yavar is really disappointing to use and it would be nice to see a new type of ammo introduced to it that would then serve the purpose that you originally would assume the Granat Yavar would be used for. So there you all go. My ideas on how the different types of ammo could be expanded on here in Generation Zero and how it could potentially be a really really good thing for us as the community. Uh, so Again, as always, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. But, there you guys have it. Uh, another wishlist video from me. I've actually compiled all my wishlist videos into a um, playlist over on my channel, so if you want to see all of my wishes along the way, you can go off and check them out there. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Until then, peace.